Hi guys, Randall here, and today I want to showcase kind of a weird team featuring Ayaka. Uh, if you, like me, haven't pulled for Villas because there was a ton of time-limited stuff back-to-back -back and you just didn't have the chance to pull for him, uh, I figure Ayaka is a really decent replacement. Is she as good? No. Mine's only 115, that's also something. Uh, but what she does is she hastes people before the fight begins, and then when the fight actually begins, she will heal people while giving them AP back, and also have her limit break, which is an instantaneous cast AoE heal, which, because of its instant cast, is actually a bit better than Bellis' options. So she does have some edges over him. Now, naturally, she can't attack. Her haste doesn't haste herself, so that's a bit of a detriment as well. Uh, but I find that she's a really decent replacement for players that don't own her, uh, don't own him. So I figure it would be interesting to show you guys what she can do. Uh, this is also a team I'm using in Guild Battle currently, and it's doing marvelously, so that's very interesting. So let's quickly show you the team comp, and then we can hop into some fights. So first of all, we've got Ayaka herself. She is very squishy in that setup. If this was a win setup, then she would be a lot more tanky. Uh, what she's got that made her interesting right now is her master ability that, among other things, gives her 20 area resistance. So right now, she only has 20 area resist in our setup because we have area resistance for earth units on top. I find that stacking both area and single target resistance is one of the best ways to build teams currently. Uh, but I can't do that for enough element support. Imagine her in a win team though, she is going to have her own 20 AoE resistance if you're pairing her with the new vision card that is going to come out with Satali in roughly a month. Then you have another 20 area resistance for wind unit, and then finally Satali himself has a 20 area resistance buff for units to cast. So she can end up being very resistant to getting clipped by AoE attacks, and so very easily able to heal people back to full several times. Uh, for our current setup though, as I said, she is pretty squishy. If she gets hit by an attack, she is quite likely to go down. Unfortunately, that's not something we can mitigate in enough element team, but it's still decently strong. And then abilities on up very quickly. I have turned off regen because this destroys her AI, so you never want that buff up. Uh, the rest is essentially fine. Uh, I've also turned off Shadow Player because it typically brings her to rush to the enemy team and die early. So that's another thing I don't want to see happen. Then second unit we have is Noctis. He is really strong. I have a good rune set for Noctis, which definitely helps. So I've got some attack up, defense penetration, some good resistances to some elements, extra HP. So he's going to be very bulky uh, overall. And then 1300 attack is bad. Uh, his resistances are acceptable, uh, but mostly he's got some element resistance on top of everything. Against Lightning, he destroys because he barely takes any damage. But he's still bulky enough to be able to do some fighting against all the other elements as well. So he's a really strong unit in our team. The way he's set up is he's going to use his TMR first, then power up Kings. And then if for some reason he has a third round buffing, he will use the Magic Barrier from Spellblade. But typically I don't see that happening too much and all my other Spellblade abilities are off. So it's really just fishing for that. Otherwise he doesn't really need his sub jobs to be a good unit. So that's one of our guys, and the other guy is Oberon. Normally, when I play him and say guild battle map, I don't have the bow tie on. But I noticed when practicing this team comp in the specific arena map uh, that he will, while casting his barrier, get hit by enemies more often than not. So by giving him a bow tie, he advances a bit slower forward, and he's usually fine. I might turn it, uh, replace it with the dragon armor throughout the video. We'll see what happens. Uh, but currently, that's my train of thought. Uh, and then he is not built to be an accurate Oberon. Uh, if I wanted Oberon to be able to hit at invasion units very reliably, I would replace his Esper with Odin, give him Nightblade Mastery instead of Viking Lore, and give him Alexander Right Ring. Uh, but we're not going to be targeting specifically uh, evasion teams for this, so I feel like this setup is fine. Enough talking, let's go fight. So let's begin against this very fun and unconventional team where they have an accurate Gilgamesh, Vesalir, and Astris. I feel like the damage that's going to be coming out from that team might be a little too much to handle. And then since they have two ice units with long range and AoE attacks, they might also just catch Ayaka with a hit that she can't take and take out her healer and then we'll be in some trouble. But it's an interesting team comp, it's not one I've seen before and I always love trying to tackle some Astrius's when I can. So we'll test it out, we'll see how it goes. Um, my expectation is that the way our team works uh, really has Noctis move forward and take the brunt of the enemy assault early on, and he should be bulky enough to take one rotation from two enemy members, maybe three, uh, before going down. So that's really what we're hoping, and then if Ayaka plays in time, she's going to be able to heal back and uh, recover a little bit. So Oberon begins with Revitalize, starts with a 
fairly weird movement up. I've noticed that when he has the bow tie, he kind of moves upwards instead of forward, which is okay. I really want him to have the barrier before meeting the enemy team, so for me, that's not a big issue. Uh, this specific Astrius begins with his AoE buff, which means I expect him to use his AoE buff again on Vesalir, uh, perhaps, instead of Courage. Although, I believe Vesalir might have been faster than him, so I guess we'll see what happens. We have a Hasted Noctis that uses Power of Kings, really, really useful against enemies with Courage. Not so much against these enemy guys, except for Astrius, but we'll see what happens here. So, Gilgamesh, not in range, begins probably hasting Vesalir. We begin having a barrier on Oberon. And unfortunately, Ayaka just wastes a turn, which is an acceptable uh, thing. She's just going to play a little bit faster and have more chances to heal uh, in between enemy turns. So this was, oh, a Quicken on Astrius, bringing him back to the fray immediately. Uh, he might just walk into AoE range here, so I'm not too unhappy with that. So let's see what happens. Moves in, cross destructions on Noctis for pretty weak damage overall, so that's really good. And they are in a good position to get AoE now. So, nope, never mind. We just warp strike Astrius by himself. Uh, he does take a significant amount of damage, but it's not as much as I would have wanted. And then Kotetsu apparently on my bad guy, which is okay. We're just going to be hasting Oberon and watching him go nuts on the enemy team. I don't believe I've seen Gilgamesh put up a uh, barrier on himself, so he might take really high damage here. Uh, but our setup is not for full offense, we have mostly a bulky setup, so it could have been a bit less. Still, one punches the Gilgamesh, so one enemy out. We're gonna haste Oberon as well. And now Vesalir plays, she could dispel haste, so it's kind of annoying because we just put that up, but chooses not to use her own limit break, then not displays again, he will be able to take down Astrius through the Courage with the power of kings, except he does not use an ability because he's dumb as heck. Had he used an ability, he would have had the follow-up hit, which would have broken Courage and killed Astrius completely. But he chose not to, and I'm a bit mad at my Noctis right here, because that was the winning move, and he just chose not to do it. But we're fine, Oberon will proc the Reflex on one, kill Astrius at least, that's one enemy down. Now, I expect that I kind of full heal our Oberon, and then get killed by the enemy Vesalir, because Vesalir will naturally go for my squishy Wind Element healer uh, that she can one-punch. But let's see exactly what happens. Uh, yep. Oh, yeah, probably just casting a spell on Vesalir, doesn't matter. We're gonna use Royal Rend, not get the stun off, because we're not lucky like this. Either way, that's two barriers down on her. I don't think she's going to win. What? She doesn't even kill Ayaka? That is the weirdest non-Ayaka kill I've ever seen. Uh, but Thunder Smite is enough, and we end up winning the fight. It was a bit messy, but we won. Next, we've got a Earth Evasion full dodge team. I don't expect us to have a great performance against a team like this. Again, mostly because my Oberon is not built for accuracy, so he... We are reliant on two guaranteed hit attacks and only have three casts each, so assuming we land all of them, we might not even have enough damage to kill the enemy team. Still, I'm curious to test it out. Let's see how it plays out. Uh, mostly, do they, is their agility synced enough that they lap into each other and chain me down? Because without chains, I feel like they're going to struggle with killing my guys through Ayaka's healing. So that's going to be an interesting fight. It's not one I've tested a lot again because I'm not built for accuracy here. Uh, I find that building Noctis for accuracy is not needed in most fights, just because he has a really good AoE pattern on his guaranteed hit. Uh, but for Oberon, you want his limit break to land, you want his other abilities. Thunder Smite is a line, uh, it's in front of him, he needs the right angle to be able to use it, and it's just generally a weak uh, guaranteed hit. It has a lot of damage, but it's so hard to place for Odo that it's not a reliable way. Uh, to defeat evasion teams. Still, so, we'll see what happens. So they have uh, Violet moving backwards. Um, I believe with a setup like this, they will have a chance to buff up everybody with their uh, extra lives before meeting our team, so that's definitely scary. Uh, we will be very much relying on Noctis' power of kings to perhaps land uh, secondary hits and cancel out the Courages. So that's what I'm hoping will happen. And hopefully they don't do like he doesn't do like he did last fight, and just decides to use his uh, basic attack, which does not have a follow up hit on secondary turns because that was a very very weak turn. So courage on violet as well. So yes, they all have extra lives. They also all have extra evasion buffs. So definitely a good early setup for the evasion team. They did exactly what they wanted to, and they're not even grouped to take down an AOE. Uh, so we have a chance to put up a magic barrier. That's not bad. 
Ayaka's alone and probably walking within, into the enemy range, so I don't like this. And then I think, because not the slap, all three enemy members are just going to chain him down and he's going to die very quickly. But let's see what happens. The base three hits from Elena barely takes any damage because he's a badass. Uh, but now the chain is starting to build up. So Violet follows that up with a Vorpal Blade, which will deal significant damage. We know we don't have a barrier for physical attacks, so that was a lot of damage. And then, yeah, Thug also goes before we do, but chooses to go for Oberon for some reason, so I'm very surprised about this one. Now, time to fight back. So Not Displays uses the Sky Hammer on all three units for pretty good overall damage. Then the follow-up hits is going to do a pretty high number as well. I find that my emulator is having issues, it's slowing down, hopefully it doesn't crash. And also, hopefully Oberon uses Thunder Smite. Yes, he does. So pops one extra life from the enemy members. At that point, they all play together, so they will be able to get chains off. But we'll be back to full HP. So unless they all release their chains on Noctis again, I think we are going to be in a pretty good spot. So let's see what happens. He chooses to go for Ayaka. At that point, Ayaka can die. That means no chain on Noctis, and it means we have more chances to hit the enemy team. So that's really good for me. So allow me onto Oberon. He will be dead from Locke's follow-up, but hopefully Locke does not move. And so they just stay together for another hit. Uh, okay, Locke is a spinning slash. That's fine. It's not enough movement to matter. They are perfectly placed for enough this follow up. So Skyhammer on everybody. Pops the courage, pops the re raise. Does not matter because we will have the follow up hit that should deal enough damage to kill the two of them. So, yup, takes Violet down and then takes Locke down. And Noctis definitely carried the fight. Or apparently this guy reflexes my next turn, and he survived the follow-up hit, so okay, he's fine, but they might still win because uh, he lived the follow-up hit for some reason that I didn't see happening, and then uh, we can't hit him anymore, we're out of guaranteed hits, so Noctis is just going to waste turns until the end of the battle. So I was a bit too hasty in saying that we were going to win this, uh, but we don't really have a means of clearing the enemy team at that point. Our team's just not set up with enough accuracy for it. So I guess the weirdest, most surprising of losses, but it's fine, it's what happens. Uh, this guy has enough AP still to keep spamming, so he is going to make it out. Alright, Luck, you win, because I just ran out of casts and your reflex the final one. And we've got a pure water team, Winter Victora, Astrius, and Celeste. Uh, when I was used doing scrims against these teams, I had some success, but honestly, cracking an Astrius team is very, very hard because he'll typically just kill people before the healer gets a chance to do anything, especially with a very hard-hitting support like Winter Victra. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll have a shot, uh, but I don't think uh, the super meta new powerful unit is able to uh, be beaten by my slightly suboptimal team. Maybe we'll be a surprise, though. Uh, if we do win, it's mainly going to be thanks to the haste, because it is the one big edge that our team has over there. So Oberon begins, uses Revitalize, moves weirdly to the top like he usually does. Then Noctis uses Protect, which is going to be relevant. Uh, fails on Winter Victora, which is great, she needs it to be able to spam. Meanwhile, Astrius is usually fine with only a couple buffs in, because he has uh, enough extra AP generation to just keep going. So Shell on Celeste, she starts be moving forward. So she's going to be into the fray very quickly here. Uh, Noctis will have a chance to use Power of Kings, which is a pretty good buff, I'm happy he uses it. And Ayaka will walk forward a bit too early, so I don't like that too much. Uh, she will not have a great CT position to uh, survive the incoming hits. So takes a hit from Winter Victoron. Nope, chooses to hit Oberon with another move down. So now he's at move down two for his next turn. That is pretty funny. Uh, what does Celeste do? She also goes for Oberon, so he's lost a lot of HP before putting up this barrier, but he will get healed back, so it's not too big a deal. Now, where does Noctis go? He kind of has to go for her, right? Does basically no damage on this Celeste. I don't know, I haven't looked how she's built, but that amount of tankiness is insane. Uh, my Noctis does have pretty good slash resistance penetration, but I expect that it was just a lot of slash resistance still. That reduced my damage and probably a lot of defense because Noctis struggles with defense penetration as well. Now, Oberon does have 40 defense penetration. Hopefully, he hits harder. This also improves Earth, so it's gonna help. 3000, oh gosh, we are losing this for sure. I don't see how we can potentially kill these guys at that point. So, enemy Victora 
barely has the damage to one punch my Ayaka. At that point, I think we're done. Uh, there's nothing we'll be able to do if we can't heal, because uh, they have a super tanky unit still in front, and I don't have any of that. So Skyhammer for a okay-ish follow-up, but it really doesn't do that much damage. Meanwhile, this girl does significant damage to everybody. Like, the enemy tank is doing more damage to my guy than I'm doing to them. So that's a pretty good showcase of how good Celeste can be in a mono water team, where she's got a lot of... Uh, where she's got a lot of offense. So, finally goes down, but we still have to deal with the rest of the enemy team. We take a break spread to the face, and then Astrius is going to finish off Oberon. That doesn't have any more barriers, I believe. So, there we go. Finishes him off, and we lose this. It wasn't even close. This time, let's hit this Astrius, Esther, and Celeste team. One thing that I failed to mention when preparing for this video is the map effect on this map gives Earth resistance to everybody. So we are weaker than we should be. I don't know what the exact number for Earth Resistance is, but I expect it's at least 20%. Uh, the current guild battle gives 50% life resistance. I'm pretty sure they don't have 50% Earth Resist because I notice a significant drop in damage. Uh, but that is something to keep in mind. We would be hitting harder were it not for the map effect. So the match that we lost to Locke surviving the follow-up attack, perhaps. Not really, because that's a type of attack, actually. But it might matter in some scenarios where we struggle with killing an enemy tank, for example. Uh, we have less damage because of resistances uh, that are given to, against Earth units. So let's see what happens here. I am happy that we have one Lightning and unit on the enemy team. Uh, that will certainly be a better matchup than fighting an enemy Winter Victor because that was very hard. She was able to use pretty good follow-up attacks and mostly snipe our Ayaka from when downtown. When she was really far away and in a safe position, but an archer on top of a hill does have really good range, so that was bad. So Noctis uses Power of Kings, starts moving forward, so far so good, Oberon will put up his barrier before meeting the enemy team, and Ayaka just keeps grouped with the other guys. That is a pretty good setup. Now, single target resistance on Celeste is gonna be hard to break, but it's okay. And then Keenblade apparently feels to me like kind of a wasted turn, they don't need the CT boost at this current point in time, so it doesn't really change the outcome of the fight. So Noctis will move on to Celeste, he'll probably use his Barrier Break because it's a high 2 move and it's one of the only ones he can use from this position. And at least now my team is split in different heights, which is different from last time, so uh, it's going to be hard for them to catch my units in AoEs. So Esther goes, drops the Limit Break onto Noctis, now he does have 57 Lightning Resistance, he is not going to take a lot of damage from this. So let's see what happens. This there is a hard hitting unit, but yeah. Slash resistance down though, that could be a bit concerning because it does mean we're going to take significant damage from uh, bubble of attacks by Astros. So Obron goes up, fires the limit break, which does have a good height range as well, so he's able to fire at people down without too much issue. And wow, now this is a much less tanky Celeste to these kind of heads. So she takes 6,000 from Oberon's limit break. At this point, if there was no extra earth resistance on the map, they would be uh, she would be dead. So that's pretty good. Let's see what Noctis does as a follow-up. Uses Skyhammer, which doesn't do uh, enough to the enemy Esther uh, for me to care about it, but it's an okay hit. And now we're grouped, so we're probably going to lose someone. Nope, only reaches Oberon with a cross destruction. And at that point, I expect Esther to maybe go down before. Uh, yeah, before we uh, we are in too much trouble, so Ayaka just gets the chance to limit break everybody back to full HP, and there is no way Astrius kills anyone but Ayaka at this point. And Ayaka, because he can one-shot her, so it doesn't matter whether she's at full HP or not. Let's see if Noctis has the damage to kill Astrius, though. He uses Blade Toss, which is okay, buffs the Courage, but then follow up and finishes him off. There we go. So that was a much better showcase uh, of what we can do against them. Now, I've got a tempting version of the water team that uses a healer and also a haster, so when I was building for this team, I had into consideration that Aerith was another good option. She has haste, she has heals that increase defense, so she's a comparable unit to Ayaka as well. It's just that I find giving haste to Aerith kind of breaks her AI, because one of the main edges Aerith brings is re-raise, and so if you... Uh, make her haste, somehow her AI will use haste over re-raise and she never actually gets to cast re-raise on anybody. Uh, so I don't know how this enemy Aerith is set up, maybe she's not even a time mage, but I'm curious to see more versus Astrius because it is the big thing to tackle right now. Uh, I could show you 
features against Mono Lightning teams, but as you can imagine, it is a slaughter. I can probably kill two in a row, as I do in Guild Battle, uh, without even uh, recovering, so... Uh, it's not as good of a showcase. So there we go, standard start. Uh, this time Astris goes for Celeste first, up top, so he'll be closer to my team. I don't think it's going to matter too much. So Protect and Shell onto Celeste, we're going to haste, not just like usual. And then I don't know what spell this enemy Aerith is casting, but I'm very curious to see what's going to come out of this turn. So it is a re-ray, so she is not set up as a Time Mage, uh, but it also means we're going to have a very hard time killing this enemy Celeste. So not displays again, power of the true king. So he's got 10,000 HP and some extra defense that's certainly going to be useful. Oberon puts up the barrier and uh, Ayaka has her wasted turn. Now another deep fortification, so still no courage on Asterisk. He might meet us without giving himself the extra life. Uh, magic burst, decent damage on Oberon but not too bad so far. Uh, then I'm not sure what I, uh, Aerith is doing, but I think she's attacking me. So Sorcerer Storm for 2k, that is fine. She also walked in range of some potential AoE hits. So I really don't mind that. Now this time Noctis plunges down, which in this map is really kind of boring, because now we don't get to see the fight anymore. So that's a, that's a shame of a move. But there we go, a fat dragon shine. We're going to do some damage to the enemy Celeste, but she still has protect, she still has some good means of surviving. Uh, only takes 4,000 damage from this, so it was a pretty weak hit. Is Astris in range? Yes, he is. Uh, pops the slow on Oberon. That is not good, but haste removes slow and transforms it into CT up instead, so I guess it's fine for now. Uh, Oberon might very well die though, from the follow up hit, so let's see what happens. Barely makes it out of this one, but Aerith is also going to go. So if Aerith decides to attack instead of healing, we will be in a bad spot. Or maybe she'll just be dead, but I think the extra earth resistance here, again, uh, playing a big role in maintaining the enemy team alive. So she gets everybody back to full HP. Oberon, uh, I don't know who he's going to go for, uh, chooses to go for these two, and this time kills the enemy Aerith. But did he walk out of my Ayaka's range? No, he didn't. Okay, good. So he will get healed back, and then I'm happy that Ayaka walked into the enemy Astrus's range, because he might waste his turn going for her instead of going for my more important guys. Or maybe he'll just die from me being hasted and faster than them. So, you know, the re-raise and then the attack from the enemy uh, Aerith just wasn't as high value as what my uh, Ayaka brought here. So she healed back, she hasted everybody, and we were able to lap the enemy team into victory. So there we go, Celeste finally goes down to my attacks, and we have managed to win this one. Or she comes back to life, but it doesn't matter, look at the turn order, we still get extra turns, and we're actually going to crash my uh, emulator with a Esper summoning, or not, it didn't crash, I'm surprised. Well, there we go, this is it for the fight. So that was it, I think one big way that I could improve the team that I didn't want to bother with doing because runes are a pain to move around is changing this TMR for a TMR that has hate down. So it could be Venera's TMR or Violet's TMR, uh, but something that reduces hate because then uh, there's less chance she get caught in an AoE or etc or gets just targeted by the enemy team and she has more chances to heal. I didn't want to bother with it, but it's definitely an improvement you guys could make on this team if you wanted to. Uh, but this is it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you've thought about it. I think it's a pretty fun team and it's fun to showcase older units that are going to be comparable somewhat to newer cost 100 units. Uh, but yeah, that's me. So thank you so much again and I'll see you soon.